Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Lord, we want your will to be done. I thank you, Father, that you're delivering us from evil. And so I pray that that one that is listening to me, that they'll be in the spirit to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying and not Sandy. I pray, God, that they will reverence Proverbs 21 and 21 that says, He who pursues righteousness and love finds life, prosperity, and honor. So I thank you today, Father, that they are hearing from heaven and then they're making the right choices to make sure they obey you and not their flesh. In Jesus' name, well, thank you for joining me. I am just so glad that I had an opportunity to talk today. Um, There are several things I wanted to say, but I know that this message is going to be uh, two parts to it. So as you can see there, I am dealing with part one today. I'm talking about conflict relationships. I'm talking about, uh, I'm going to be sharing probably six addictive, I'm going to be tongue-tied, six addictive type of cycles of arousal bonding. Now, I know everybody has been talking about trauma, post-traumatic stress. We've been talking, you know, as a therapist and a counselor, you know, we do talk about trauma bonding, and this message even was really provoked even the more, even though it's been, you know, it's been meditating inside of me for a while. But I wanted to give this message now because looking at the times that we're in and looking at relationships that many of us have created bonds with people or have really gotten close or allow people to get too close, I felt that this is important to talk about this particular word. You know, there are several words that should stand out here to you. Number one, counterfeit. And then number two, addictive. And number three, cycles. Number four, arousal. And, of course, bonding. And so you want to get a pen and listen in. I pray that you will share this, and I appreciate you for taking the time to listen to this. And remember, like I always say, I have no uh, 100 on anything, uh, my intellect or knowledge or anything like that. And my disclaimer for you today is, and always, is to remind you that I have not arrived on any subject. And so, but I believe that God has anointed me, and I believe that sharing my experience and where I have been, and I'm not afraid to share those uh, wounds, those battle wounds where God can uh, help someone break free. I love Psalm 119 and 71. It's one of my favorites. It is good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. So I pray that what is said here today, that you will listen and that you will take heed to it. And remember, to be forewarned is to be forearmed. Amen. And so let's just talk about this in a little bit so we can look at and pray against these areas that we need to break uh, and, you know, that we need to make sure that we don't break them because you can break something and put it back together. We want to destroy the works of these cycles, amen, and we want to make sure that we look at ourselves and assess ourselves to see where are we. Are we out of the place where God, uh, you know, would have us to be in regards to where we're headed? So, uh, one of, like I said, this assignment that I gave one of my clients to do a homework, it kind of provoked me to think about it from the day that I gave it to her I just meditated on it, you know, and I thought about it even more and more and more. So, you know, this is something that I believe that many singles and those who are getting uh, real close relationships in business and or ministry, I think it's important that we look at, you know, how realistic or how on the real or authentic, um, you know, are these people in our lives, you know, in these relationships. So they don't have to be married. You don't have to be a dating. You don't have to be anybody engaged. You could be somebody close. But counterfeit, I'm going to jump into this counterfeit, what I mean by that, that, that's something that's made to appear like something, you know, and we talk about incubus and succubus and all of that, you know, that comes into the room and it may look like someone that you know or that man or whatever that's got this hat on or that, that appears to you that looks like your wife or look like your boyfriend, girlfriend. But I'm talking about this counterfeit type of relationship that comes in the natural flesh from where we are, human beings, you know, that thing that's similar, that thing that looks like it's just the right one or that thing that's causing you to be codependent because you think that that's the only one. If I'm talking about that something, you know, that counterfeit thing, we know there's your counterfeit $100 bill, you know, that count, that counterfeit $20 bill, that counterfeit dollar bill, you know, that imitation of something valuable, something that you cherish, you know, something that is important with you, that had the intentions to be with you or, you know, to make you feel close to them when really they have the intentions to deceive you or to defraud you. And so this message, what I'm touching on today, is about relationships, those that can be deceptive, as I said before. 
for, especially for those who are single or those who are preparing to be married, those who have joined into partnerships, like I said, with people for business or ministry or just a friendly relationship. These bondage can get very, very addictive. They can become very, very uh, psycho-driven. That means now this thing that you believe that this is what God would have you to do, now your emotions have gotten involved and many of these places that you're in right now has caused you a lot of pain. I want to say you to say like this for now, and then hopefully I'll come back and give you the say like again. Just say like this message, the highest stage in moral actions that we do at which we can even arrive is when we recognize that we ought to control our thoughts. Okay, very important. You go back and rewind that. But what stood out to me as I began several different scriptures, I want to give you those now because I don't know how and when I'm going to get on the roll and start to share in this classroom. Yes, it is. It is a classroom, and I pray that you will be able to take this information down for what you believe that God would allow you to chew off of because everybody is not supposed to be in this classroom, and everybody that, that may hear this may not understand this classroom because maybe you have not been there. But guess what? Keep living. Because what God wants us to understand is we don't get a revelation and a knowledge from people that have been there or maybe have made some silly decisions. One thing we want to make sure we know is that when we have made the wrong, you know, decision about something, this is what this type of counterfeit will do. This is what arousal will do. And so I want to give you Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 through 12. I'm trying to pull my uh, notes here down. Uh, 9 through 12, that says two are better than one because why? They have good, uh, they have a good reward for their labor. Verse 10 says, but for if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Verse 11 says, and again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? In verse 12, and If one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not easily broken. That's the reason why I needed to do this when the Lord gave me this particular uh, text to look at. I went, hmm, okay, I can get to daddy on that, Father, because number one, Many of these cycles or many of these arousal bondings are coming from, and I'm not talking about, uh, particularly the trauma bond, though it's all in the same, uh, how they say, same uh, group uh, grouping of these spirits that try to attack us and keep us in this place where we can't move forward. But what I am talking about is these threefold court. It's not easily broken. This is the reason why we have to be careful of our relationships, be careful of allowing our flesh to get connected or emotionally intertwined with people that we know that God is trying to get you to, to you know, ring your little bell in your head to say, listen, look, watch this. This is what this is person is doing. This is the intentions here. This is not who I've called you to. And so let's look at, and that's what that three, four card again, it's not going to be easily broken. That means now the thing that you didn't ever think that you needed to do, you don't need to fast, you don't need to do anything, you need to just cut them out. It seems like for some reason it just don't go away. Or that person or that situation is not changing. You know, and then you just keep yourself in denial that it's getting better, but yet it's not. And one thing I have learned is that when you think about the choices that we make, many of them, we already see those things that are coming against us in the spirit realm or that is not coming together. You already know that it is not completely what God had you to do. And I'm not saying our relationship is going to be 100. We're going to have some issues. But I want you to understand that when it's counterfeit, God and already gave you the warning sign. But we still ignore them and thinking your sex is going to fix it. You're thinking that maybe your beauty is going to fix it, you know, or your shape. they just so in love with your beautiful face and your shape. Or you just really, really, just really overwhelmed with the fact that he's got all these muscles and all this intellect and all these things that they have and that it's going to be okay, okay? But First John 2, verses 15 through 17, I want you to write down. He says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If a man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Verse 17, and the world passed away. Yes, it will. And we're in this place right now. We can see so much is passing by quickly. And the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. 
And then I'm going to give you James 1, 13 through 15. And so I believe I'll just jump right into this message so I can give you these six that I want you to think about that has given us much tickling of our flesh that has caused us to be aroused in places. And so I'll define what arousal is in just a minute. So verse 1, I'm sorry, James 1, verse 13 through 15 says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Ah, yeah, there it is. And then verse 15, Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Now I want to jump right into getting into the main meat of the matter, and let's just talk a little bit about, we already, I've already covered the counterfeit, uh, now I want to just talk, talk a little bit about arousal. Okay, so when I talk about arousal, we already know it's a fact, it's an act, it's in the mind, it's in the emotion, it's just simply you making me feel good, okay? Are you really wake, awakening something that's been sleeping inside of me? Are you really, really got the kind of talk I want to hear? You really are stimulating my body. You're making me want to become active in something that's been dead and I didn't want to do. You excite me. You know, you just arouse me in this place. You just waking up all the things that really ring my bell and make me come alive. I know I'm talking to you. So anyway, I said I was going to be real calm on this. Let's talk about arousal. And so in other words, simply, this is what's moving you. This is what's making you do what you do, even when you, when you don't want to do it. You, it's just move you. You know, they keep saying, oh, it's the soul tie. Well, we know it's the soul tie. But I want to I wanna talk about the arousal bonding because arousal, these, there are six types of arousals that I want to give you really, really quick. And the first one, I hope you got your team. The first one we hear all the time about there's all sorts of ways that people can arouse us that I gave you a few minutes ago. But one of the things I want you to do is seriously assess yourself to see which one of these six do you fall into. See where God is showing you that you may be trapped at. That you may be in a situation that you may be in one of these uh, six type of arousal bondings that the enemy has used because it knows all about you. You heard the song. Uh, he knows my name. Well, the devil knows your name, too. He already knows what tickles you, what arouses you, what makes you move, what makes you do these things. Remember, to be forewarned is to be forearmed. Many of us are born with all of these different talents and gifts and things that we want to call our gifts when they're only simply talents that God has blessed us with. But we many times we use those talents to provoke or to get people to move forward in places that God has not allowed you to be with that person, number one, in the very beginning. And so I want to talk about the first one, and it's the physical one, okay? That's the one I think is messing a whole bunch of people up because they want to make sure they try the sex on for size to see whether or not before I marry you, if this is really going to be right. You know, so you don't want to cheat on them. You don't want to leave them because things are just not right. But this physical part of it is messing a whole bunch of people up. Because like I always say, if God brought you to it, he'll get you through it. I don't believe that if you don't have the sex and then you don't feel right, that this was a mistake. I think some things that God is trying to get you to realize that you may be still in the click of some arousal from somebody else. I don't want to preach that you're looking for something out of that person that's still connected in your soulless realm from somebody else. Okay, here we go. Let me slow it down. And so anyway, number two, we already said, like I said, it's the physical realm. We already know this is what touches you. This is what makes you feel good. And when they touch you a certain way and they do a certain thing, this is what you desire. Number two, visual. Visual is very important. So this is why we have to watch our eye gate, okay, what we're looking at, what's arousing you. You know, without going into any detail, I remember when <clears throat> when I was married, you know, and, and at some point we got to recognize this stuff is still going on in a whole lot of anointed marriages. You know, you, you got to look at the, 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 the form before you can get aroused to be with you. You know, or you got to look at something. You know, you got to get yourself aroused up before you can be able to even decide if you really want to even be with him because you're mad at him or her. But visual is very important. This is why we got to protect our eye gate, okay? So you see this thing. That's why I say, tell you, I, I don't like to go. I, I don't really like to look at pictures when I see men with all these puffed up chicks, chests, and all these fine muscles. Okay, because this is this has aroused me sexually. I don't want to look at that. I don't want nobody around me doing all of that. First of all, number one, I'm going to make sure I watch that spirit to make sure I tell it, mm, mm, I see you trying to work. Get out of my face. Get back. 
because I know that I know your name. In other words, and the devil know your kind. He know what you like. So visual is very important. Just like men looking at women with big rear ends, and many of us are so visual and got our a conscious mind of our bodies, we'll go and buy some rear ends or buy some boobs. So we're looking at the visual, okay? What arousing you? What's making you want to tick or do things or put on things? to give you a visual contact or someone to have a visual about you that they can remember, have a lasting memory about you. And then number three, audio. This is another thing that's really messing up a whole lot of our kids. We already know that as well as visual tapes and all that. But audio is another one. Why? Because I've been told that my vo- my voice is very intriguing, that I have this voice, that people know this voice, you know, and that it moves people or whatever, you know, and some men like this deep voice I have. Some men like this voice because they figure it's powerful and it's strong. But, you know, but what we got to understand, audio is very important because audio is, is also the words. It's the intellect, the things that come out of our mouths, the way it comes out, the vibes that people get from that, you know, these ways that you talk to me, you know, how you sound at night, how she breathes before you hang up at night. You want to hear that breathing, you know, all this mess. But it is real. We want to look at the audio of what we're hearing. We want to look at the audio of what's making us to be provoked to want to talk that way all sexy and change our voices. That audio is very important. Now, here's number four, the cognitive. Okay, now, the cognitive part of this is really, really important because, to be real, we got a lot of people who are thinking things are on a whole other dimension. We got people who are very, very upset about a lot of things, and their minds are not where they need to be. And so people are thinking things that are relationships that are not relationships. People are expecting people to do things that they have not agreed to, and people have just took it upon themselves in their mindset based on some of these others that I just told you, these first three. They have decided that this has aroused them. So I believe that now my mood is here, that you've got my mood to believe that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm intensified now with being a partner with you. I'm excited. I, I need you. you. You're supposed to be my partner. God's showing me I'm supposed to be with you. And that is not necessarily so, okay? That's not necessarily so. And so what, that's the reason why we have to pray for God to talk to us concerning these types of relationships, concerning these types of arousals that many times we get ourselves in. So you've got to get uh, divine clarity, okay, before you be making any decisions. And then number five, relational. That's why I chose to say relationships, because relational type of arousal, this type of, of arousal is where you start to connect to a person as though they're going to be your, you know, your spouse or uh, that they're going to be your, uh, you know, partner in business. Now you're doing this relational type of arousal. Now you all are communicating. You all have this deep conversation about what you both can do. You all are sharing about each other's dreams. You're discussing what you're going to do business-wise, you know, how you all are going to do things. So now your relationship, you've aroused and opened up each other's vision about that. But guess what? The devil knows how to send the counterfeit to make it look like that that's the person that's supposed to be in the business with you. And many people have went into business with people that they have actually, that the person's actually been sent there because the devil already knows. Everybody got a monetary spirit. Everybody got a demon that's assigned to them in this monetary spirit group. And what they want to do is monitor everything that you're doing, watching everything you're doing. So it has sent on assignment. Somebody to make sure that you don't get there. So it make it look like that you have gotten to a certain house height in that particular relationship or in the vision that God has given you, and for some reason it gets a hole in it. The air start to pop out. I mean, there's a seep out, and then now. The person got an attitude with you. You don't know what's wrong with them. They're starting to draw back. Because why? They ain't got enough information from you. I said it. They got enough information from you. They, they got, so, got you so aroused to believe that we are partners and I'm your bestie and I'm here to support you when actually, and heaven forbid that it's not happening to you, but maybe it may be something you need to be praying about. That God has allowed me to come in to talk about this today. You need to look about your deep conversations. How many things you really have been sharing? How much vision have you really been given and drawing it out so they can see it? And then now they go and shift it around and say God showed it to them. I'm going to talk to you. Forewarned, we'll give you four armor. I'm just trying to get you to understand that these deep conversations, you better know that it's God and not our flesh. I've already read the scriptures to you. 
And so think about what you're discussing, who you're giving this relationship with, and how are you going through these cycles. When you have a cycle, that means it keeps repeating, and you're trying to figure out why I can't seem to get up because you keep getting two steps back or three when you've already gotten to a great step ahead, and now you got three steps back because there's something in the midst in the relationship, okay? Something is there that you are in the cycle that you're in, a, in denial about, this addicted behavior that you keep doing over and over again out of these six arousal, type, arousal types. And then number six, this is the one that's emotional, okay? Now, it looks like this is going to be part two today. I don't know if it's going to be part, I mean, part one today. I don't know if it's going to be part two, but you make sure you go back and look and see if I've given part two, because it may be today. Don't know. It depends on what my schedule does after I get off of here, because my time is winding down. And so the emotional. Now, the emotional part is where we're all human, we're all human beings, uh, but many of us are in the erotic realm, but many of us don't want to give up the fact, there's my timer, don't want to give up the fact that because we are in the emotional realm, many of us don't want to give up that fact that many of us go in the erotic realm of the emotion. And this is why we have a lot of people who are very angry. Anger is an emotion, and we need to exercise our emotions because God has given us those. But many of us have taken them in the erotic realm and used them and, and, and allowed the enemy to use them and pervert them. And so we need to be very, very careful with number six because this is where emotional attachments come. This is where we need to look and see how we become addicted in these relationships, where we become very uh, in denial in these relationships, codependent in these relationships, and we're trying to figure out why am I still here, why it looks like I know they're not good for me, but I'm just going to try it one more time. This is the reason why emotionally we have so many people who cannot go forward because they're in the emotional place of the arousal. And I'm, I'm, I'm really, really serious about this. In either way that you get in this information, I want you to know that you've got to think a minute about and ask God, what am I doing that's repeating a cycle for me not to get ahead because of my emotions or because of what I'm bringing to the relationship from old? Many of us are bringing old matters into a new situation that God is trying to give you an opportunity to grow up in. But then on the other hand, many of you are dealing with stuff that you know that it's not good for you because of this monitoring generational historical spirit that's been with you for a very long time that already in a red your mail and know where you're going, and you're not in a fasting and praying mode so God can show you. You know, like I said earlier on, Psalm 119 and 71, it is good for me that I went through where I have been, and I believe that God has anointed me to be able to tell the naked truth. We've got to pray against the counterfeit parts in our lives, and we've got to recover from them. But I think what's really, really important for us to know is the fact that many of us will not allow ourselves to tell the truth to ourselves and stop denying the fact that you know that you may be in one of these six that I'm talking about here. When I come back on part two, I want to share about uh, this part where we actually don't want to face the fact that this could be even counterfeit love that God is trying to show you in this relationship because what you're desiring could be only fleshly driven or soul tied driven. And I want you to make sure that you talk to God about the relationship. Talk to God about partnerships, talk to God about ministry, vision, and things like that to make sure that you don't have a snake right there in the mix trying to feed you an apple and eat like Eve. I know I'm talking to you. And so you, you, you feel so emotionally drained and so much pain behind your situation. <clears throat> but the same, same reason that I believe <laughs> that God allowed me to go through this because I went through great grief. And many of you, when you get out of these relationships, you do have a lot of abusive cycle grief that you really go through because now you figure, well, who's going to deal with me? This person understands me. And so, but you got to quit sacrificing your soul. Many of you have sacrificed your soul to the point that it's caused problems with the children. It's caused problems with raising your son and your daughter right. It's caused a lot of problems. Been there. And so I want to say this for you to stop talking to yourself and stop believing this false type of addictive uh, relationships that you keep going back and forth to that God has uh, called it or God has ordered it. A lot of it has to do with you not recovering, okay? A lot of it has to do with you are in these places that I just described. I pray that God will remind you of those things that I talked to you about earlier on. So I'm going to go to part two. 
I pray that you get a chance to listen to it and remember that these places right now that God is trying to get us to realize, it does have to do with what are you thinking. It does have to do with why are you allowing this addiction to keep going and going in your life when you already know it is about your emotions more than anything because the relationship is only there to give you some type of, how you say, some type of a, pacify or some type of way that you can feel that you feel that this is one area that I can get better in. And I know that we all need counsel about something. So I behoove behoove you to repent first, number one, for making it a God in your life. And then number two, that you have not faced the fact that God is a God that is jealous. And he is saying to you, even now I believe that he wants you to get counsel. Just think about what I'm saying. Many of you over and over again have tried to analyze this thing yourself. Many of you I stand with a relationship you know you have not been true with yourself about. Many of you won't get counsel. You just know that this is who God showed you in a dream. Well, without counsel, people fall. I'm telling you right now, I don't care how much you had a dream, you better know that people come with packages. Get you some counseling, okay, before you get married. So if you're being challenged right now by yourself, don't give up on love. Just deal with you, okay? If he don't want to go, Fine, just deal with you so then once you deal with you, you'll know what you need to be doing, okay? Stop second-guessing because guess what? If God has done it, he's going to make sure that you don't be jumping to these emotional ram pieces. He's not going to make sure that you he's gonna make sure that you look at these areas that I talk about that are arousing you to be or do, you know, in these relationships. He's going to make sure that you ask questions and do some reality check to make sure that these things that I'm doing are not really, really real. This is something that I want. You know, these casual relationships are causing you some problems. You know, let's look at the basics. These emotions are real. Let's look at the basics, that these things and these red flags are up in your face. Let's look at the basics, that God is ringing the bell saying, wake up, wake up, wake up. Can't you see you're going too fast, my daughter and my son? Wake up, wake up, wake up. You know, do this feel like you're jumping around too much right now? Does this feel like you've already settled in and you don't want to really, really recognize the fact you've got to fight? to know what real love is, because the devil is a counterfeiter, and he wants to give you counterfeit love. He wants to get you to bring these old man type of flesh to ways into the relationship to think that it's going to work, you know. So let's look at it. So how do you know if he or she is the one? Well, you got to pray, and you got to fast, and you can't just go off of what they're making you feel. These six are the ones that I want you to pray about. You know, think about the fruit of the Spirit. Where are the characteristics there? You know, where are they? You know, you know, think about how are they defining what they really mean about love and loving God more than man. You know, because the flesh is destroying everybody's stuff. I'm going to get on part two. I pray God will bless you on what you heard. Thus far. So, Father, I thank you. That that one that is listening, God, that they would hear from heaven. According to Second Timothy two and twenty two, that says, "Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart." I thank you, Father, that they will realize that you're talking, that you want us to pay attention to these addictive type of cycles that arouse us, that cause us to do things, Father. I pray, God, that that person that is listening to me will realize, God, that you want us to know that every thought comes out of deed. And I pray in the name of Jesus, they will realize in the name of Jesus that one of the greatest things that we can remember is what you talked about in Ecclesiastes, verse 12. And if one prevail against him, to shall withstand him. We need Jesus. We need you, Father, to be in this threefold court with us. We need Holy Spirit of truth. We need the Spirit of God. And so I pray that over you now, so the threefold court that is not quickly broken, that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth and peace and love and all of those will be with you, and that you will know when God is speaking, that you will know that this relationship is not a counterfeit. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Be sure and look for part two. Love you. Please share the message.